Hi guys, what's up? It's Tim Michael from TimMichaelArts.com and I'm back to do another tutorial. I've missed you guys. I've been doing a lot of speed paints and stuff like that just because they're a little quicker to make than the tutorials. Um, and also I'm just trying to take a break from doing my big commissions that I'm trying to get done here. There's a bunch more to go, but I'm starting to feel like I'm getting caught up a little bit. So let's go ahead and do a tutorial. Let's try something a little different. Um, I want to talk to you guys about two things today. Um, answering two questions from some fellow YouTubers. One question is um, how do I open up a separate window for a file so I can see it at a different zoom. And then the second question is drawing a Luigi style. So I'm going to try and combine these two together into one tutorial for you. Okay. Um, to start out, your brain sees the whole picture and it helps to see it zoomed out and not zoomed in. Um, I find that it's hard to draw zoomed out but my brain sees better zoomed out so what can I do to fix that well it's easier for me if I just make a secondary window and have that zoomed out as I'm drawing up close and personal and I'm gonna give you a quick show of how that works so first off let me show you how to open this separate window for yourself if you come up to window and arrange and you come down it says new window for unentitled uh, untitled one so whatever file you have here it's going to show here, and it could show multiple ones here if you have several files open. I'm going to go ahead and hit that new window, and you're going to see that I have two separate windows now. Okay, I'm going to take this one, I'm going to drag it so it becomes its own little box. And then you can draw on this, you can zoom in, zoom out, all that stuff. Um, let me zoom it out just so we can see it like a thumbnail size. Alright, that'll work for now. Okay, now. I'm going to try, this is kind of hard to explain, um, but I'm going to try and give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. This is a bit technical. Um, like I'm saying, the, my brain sees better on the full scale, but I like getting those little details and I like doing them zoomed in. But you can't get those details when you're zoomed all the way out. Have you ever tried drawing a comic and you're trying to draw the same character that was up close in one comic, but you draw them far away in the next one and it's nearly impossible because you can't zoom in? Well, it's the same idea here. But let's go ahead and start drawing. I'm going to go ahead and work on maybe like an eyeball. I'm going to zoom in here on my main image and I'm going to go ahead and start drawing this eyeball. Well, eyelid, actually, if it was an eyeball, it would look much different. So I'm just starting to draw in the iris now. Okay. There we go. All right. So, as I look here at my little screen I can see the full eye and I can see it here as well nice thing is is I can also zoom in here now I'm gonna go ahead and darken this up a little bit and I want to show you where I see where it starts to help me I'm gonna go ahead and just darken this in I'm using I'm using a very soft brush for this it's an airbrush but this just kinda helps um, as I work uh, helps me kinda see this a little differently different settings for different brains you know now I'm looking here and this looks pretty dull it doesn't there's no line weights there's nothing so I want to go ahead and make those line weight changes as well so I'm gonna go ahead and thicken a couple areas up so I start to see that difference now as I look at the big image it doesn't look like it's making that much of a difference to me you know it's heavier there but look what it does over here you can see that so much better over there so as I'm gonna keep I'm changing my line weights. I see the changes happening more over here on the small image than I do here on the big image. So I'm going to shade here and I can see how that affects there. I'm going to put more of a shade here and you can see this looks cool, this looks cooler. I don't know how to explain that any better than that, but that that distance, looking at it from a full scale like that, helps me see it much better than this. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, that's just how I work, and that to me just makes all the sense in the world, but it might not make any sense to you. Best way to do it, try it for yourselves. 
Also, let's talk a little bit about shading really quick and uh, see if we can touch on that. Um, there are many different ways to shade in Photoshop, um, but let me just go ahead and put in a kind of a dark area here around the eye. Okay, to me this looks fairly um, balanced. The colors look fairly balanced. But when I look here on the small image, there's this really dark area here in comparison. And I can kind of see that now that I look here, now I can kind of see it here. And I can correct it. I'm seeing some white spots in here that I can correct. I'm seeing this area is a big difference even though it looks balanced up close. It doesn't look balanced for far away. It doesn't look balanced far away, you know? <laughs> yeah, southern kind of, kind of person, you know? And so by looking at the large scale, I can see those changes that I need to make. Now, actually, this is just all too dark to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and lighten this up. There we go. Now, if I'm looking over here and I'm just trying to balance things out. Okay, I, I'm not even looking at the other screen yet. I'm just trying to think about what looks balanced. I'm trying to get all the colors to look either gradient properly or um, or otherwise. And so far, it's looking really good in my brain right now. I haven't even looked at the little uh, the little image yet. I'm using my eyedrop tool. I'm grabbing different areas to try and balance out certain areas. Eyedrop tool is definitely helpful when it comes to changing the balances and such. Okay, now that I've done this, let's go ahead and look at the small image now. Oh wow, there's a big difference. I'm looking along here and I'm seeing a little bit of lighting adjustment in there. Right here as well, you can see a, a darker blue here and a lighter blue here. Now that I look at my main image, I can kind of see that. It's kind of hard to see that though. So then that's when I start doing it and I start looking at the changes more here than here. So I'll put a swipe or two there and I'll look back over there. Oh, now it's looking more blue. You see what I'm talking about though? I can correct because I have the little image to the large image. And it looks way different because I might be zoomed in here doing this. Let me show you here. Zoomed in really close. And I'm going to start making these modifications even more. And I don't know what looks good because I'm not zoomed out. Or I can't tell if this eye here is the exact same shape as the other eye on the other side. But I'm looking here and I'm looking, this doesn't look too good, but look at what it looks like on the full, on the full scale zoomed all the way out. That looks really cool. So maybe what I'll do is I'll go, okay, um, I like that, but I don't like how it looks up close. So let me gradient it here so it looks more on purpose. So I'm going to get rid of some of these little nooks here. I'm going to darken it up on the top here like that. Look at the difference. And I'm just going to stop here because I can talk about this all day long and show you guys, but really doing it for yourself and seeing how that affects your art makes all the difference. And now I can zoom out and go, wow, that looks really good now that I've used that small image. I would have missed half of this stuff if I didn't have this little secondary image here. Now usually I'll take this image and I'll put it on a separate screen. Um, I have two screens that run. I have my Wacom Cintiq that I draw directly on. And then I also have a 32 inch monitor uh, directly behind my Cintiq. And I usually put this up there so I have more space to work with on the Cintiq. But if you don't have that, then you do whatever you can to make it work. Um, you can always make room because this is completely resizable. The other nice thing is maybe I want to make changes on a larger scale. Um, but I want to stay zoomed in. So what I can do here is I can come over to this image and I can start making large scale alterations as if I'm drawing um, all the way out, you know, so I can make my large scale changes. I have no clue what I'm doing right now, I'm just saying. But you can see it affects it in here. And then I can just go right in here and go, okay, let me um, grab some of this and I can blend it this way and uh, da, 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 you know and I can make those changes on both documents and I can save one document and it saves both documents that's what's cool alright let's go ahead and delete this work of art and make a new layer let's go ahead and talk about Luigi 
basically, as I looked at Mario and Luigi and deciding how I wanted to handle drawing them, um, I looked at Mario, who was really fat and stocky, really sh short, and um, I was thinking, okay, I want to put muscles on him. I want to make him a, a steroid Mario. And so I drew the muscles, and I kind of kept him stocky, but I wanted to give him those muscles. And then I kind of made him normal size for a human. But then Luigi comes around, and Luigi is taller than Mario. Um, and his face is longer, and there's a lot of differences between Mario and Luigi. And so when I saw that, I went, okay, you know what? I want to go ahead and um, show that to an extreme extent by really adjusting on uh, Luigi's sizing. And the way that I did that was, I'm going to show you here. Of course, that's what a tutorial is. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and show you. I'm going to leave our little window up here so we can see this on the large scale as well. Gives you that same idea. I wanted to go ahead and um, draw him so that that lankiness, that tallness showed in him. And I find the best way to do that is to go ahead and draw the torso short-ish. But then where you show the lankiness is in the legs. The legs are going to make all that difference. I mean, just by going like that alone makes him look kind of tall because his torso is already way up here. You know what I'm saying? And then you bring the arms down. And that's what makes a character lanky to me, personally, as I look at them through my ide my ideal vision. I mean, if I draw a character with a really long upper torso and really short legs, To me, that starts looking more like a kid or a really misproportioned person, you know? But I want to keep it looking in proportion, but I want to get that tallness. So by drawing the torso normal sized and then drawing these extreme legs. And then I usually exaggerate all the way down to the shoes, too. I'll make the shoes, I'll make humongous feet. I like, I like that look. I like the humongous feet and humongous forearms. So, I mean, I'll draw the arm, and then I'll draw the forearm off of that, like a, like a Mega Man gun. And then I'll draw the hand off of that. See what I'm saying? And to me, that looks cool. And it looks more in proportion than the other one does, even though it's obvious those legs are huge, all the way down to the feet. So it takes some readjustments sometimes, but I think that that looks really cool. And that's how I drew Luigi, as I was looking at his character and deciding how I wanted to handle him. I think you saw me draw a couple different options. I finally decided I wanted, definitely wanted that attack mode going on. And I really wanted to get that, that lankiness. So by sticking... I'm kind of trying to remember how I drew it. I know I put his hands kind of behind his back, kind of curled down, kind of like this. And I kept the legs really long. That's how I handled his character overall, like that. And my thing that I always have a hard time with is action. And you've heard it said before all the time where people talk about the action line, how the action line makes all the difference in the body. Is that one line, that one, um, that one line that shows the whole feeling of what the body is up to. And that is definitely uh, something that you have to practice over time to master. It's something that... In my line of work, I don't have to do that nearly as much. I don't draw. I don't draw fight action scenes. I usually draw um, individuals just their heads, or I draw them in a standing position doing something else. So when I come up to an action scene, I always try to remember that that action line is most important. As I looked at Luigi and the action that I drew for him, I drew this kind of like this. You can you can check my work. 
you know, in the actual thing, but you'll see that I drew this action line and then I worked the body off of that. And it shows speed, it shows fluidity, it shows just action. So, anyway, I think that's going to about cover this tutorial. We're at 15 minutes. So make sure you check out my website, timmichaelarts.com, for more tutorials. we got one tutorial that you can purchase. It's the Sunday Morning Comics series. Um, it's how to draw Sunday morning comics, and uh, I covered that a little bit. And uh, you can buy that there. And also, that comes with my free set of brushes that I use. And uh, you are more than welcome to use those and build your style and become a professional artist. Um, also, you can purchase caricatures, you can buy t-shirts, you can just go check out some of the web comics. I need to update those. I haven't updated those in a while. Um, I think that's about it. So, guys, thank you so much. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and uh, also uh, leave a comment down below. Make sure to keep it clean. Ding! Right? I love how that that keep it clean saying is what went so far. Everyone seems to love to keep it clean, so I appreciate that. Um, I'd say if there's one thing that I want you guys to remember, it's always keep it clean, you know. And uh, I think that's about it. So God bless you guys. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for being so patient with me. I hope you enjoyed the speed paints. And uh, we'll have more tutorials to come, certainly more tutorials on the website as we continue to develop our products. God bless you guys. See you next time. Love you all.